Before summers were a school board meeting to order. Can I have a roll call, please? Here. 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 This is lovely. I would like to welcome our student representative, Jack Rossiter, to lead us in the pledge today. Thank you. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, welcome everyone. Hopefully everyone had a good April break. Are there any comments by visitors this evening? It looks like there's none. I'll give it a minute. Any initial comments by board members um, this evening before our meeting? All right, seeing none. Uh, what is the wish of the board for the consent calendar? Do I have a motion to accept it as presented in our packet? I make a motion to, to approve the consent calendar as presented. Do second. 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 Great. Do you have any um, comments or discussion on any items? There wasn't many. All right. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All right. The consent calendar is adopted. All right. Reports this evening. We'll start with our student representatives report. Jack, take it away. Thank you. Oh, is your microphone on? And you can and pick it up. up. Yep. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Um, my name is Jack Rosser, and I'll be giving a brief update about what is going on in our school. Uh, there's a district-wide spring concert on May 8th being held at Marshwood High School. Um, that whole week is also Teacher Appreciation Week, so just say an extra special thank you to all of our hardworking teachers. On May 16th, the middle school has their um, school-wide color run to raise money for their end-of-year field trips. Also later that day at 6 p.m. is the district showcase at Idlehurst. The district showcases an open house type of event uh, where various clubs and organizations throughout all of the schools come to set up a table um, for people to come around to and learn about each club and what they've done throughout the year. On May 17th, there's the talent show. It's going to be held in the Black Box Theater at the high school. And then to close out that week, prom is on May 18th for juniors and seniors at the Riverwalk in Dover. Spring sports are in full swing, with baseball, softball, and track all having their next game this fr game or meet this Friday. Mm -hmm. And for our seniors, their awards ceremony will be on Thursday, May 30th. Parents are welcome, but please RSVP to SHS if you are planning on attending. More details have been sent via email. The graduation parade will happen on June 4th, leading up to the actual graduation ceremony on June 7th in the Winnemore Center at UNH. And that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nearing the end of the year. Superintendent, superintendent's have, report, yep. I have nothing uh, uh, right now, but I'll have some stuff that I'll talk about down below. Okay, great. Uh, we do have a business administrator's report. Thank you, Katie. We did move forward with the replacement of the culinary oven. That was on um, back in the fall. We were holding off to see if we needed to do any, you know, special ed had any income that we had to take care of. We were able to get some, so um, we moved forward with that. So that's been helpful. I'm also working with Jay to get the weight room at the middle school completed. Um, the main hallway tile repair. Thank you. 
it. Mic drop. Oh, good. Captivating. Good. Okay. So again, that included the weight room at the middle school. So we're going to get that done. I talked to Steve Hodston today. He's got the quotes ready to go and we're going to get that stuff ordered and get that done. Um, the main hallway tile replacement at the middle school, it's either going to be replaced or just upgraded maybe painted, but it'll look much nicer. And then the additional radios that were also approved in the fall. And then Chris Tebow at the high school is working on um, the high school marquee sign that was also approved to go out front of the high school. So we're going to get all those projects done um, now that we've been able to release the funds. And again, these were approved back in the fall with the supplemental appropriation for the accuracy funds. And then um, at the next meeting, I would like, um, due to the available balance that we have, um, usually uh, the board will approve us to pay out the retirement stipends for the retirees that are retiring this year. They get a sick day buyback, and if they've been here long enough, they get a retirement buyback. And so usually those are paid out in July, but if we have money available, usually the board will approve to pay them out in June, so that way we can you know, have a buffer going into next year. So at the next meeting, I'll bring that for approval for the board to um, decide if they would like to do that. It's about $88,000. So. And then we may have some other facilities items that we're going to bring forward if the budget stays the way it is and if the board would like to move forward with, you know, spending down some of the available balance. Um, in terms of revenue, um, we did receive our last building aid payment from the state of New Hampshire. That's for the Idlehurst building. Um, we get two payments. This was our second one. And we've also received $29,000 more for our Medicaid payments, so that's good. And then I had a note on here, the 24-25 budget, but we're going to discuss that later on in the agenda, so I'll hold off on that. And then just to tag team what Jack said about teacher appreciation, it is teacher appreciation well, we call it staff appreciation. We're going to recognize all the staff. So next Friday on May 10th, the district always provides a Panera lunch for the staff. So we've done that again this year. So all staff in the district is going to get um, Panera lunch provided to them. Um, and also we're recognizing our bus drivers this week too on May 1st because it's bus driver appreciation week. So each building is going to do something at their level to appreciate our bus drivers for all they do for us. And it's also food service school lunch hero week. Um, and they're going to be uh, participating in the Panera lunch with all the rest of the staff. So just wanted to mention that as well. And that's all I have. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. I have a quick question. I remember our walk through through the middle school and high school. We had just some discussion about the A AEDs that were in the hallways. Do we ever pick more up of those? Do we ever find the ones that we're missing? Or I'd have to confirm with Jay. Okay, I'm not awesome. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that'd be a great thing to add to a to a list at the end. All right. Anyone else? Yeah. I have a quick question, and I'm not sure if this is more appropriate to ask later on when we're talking about the 24-25 budget, but um, I remember that in the summer, tentative numbers become actual numbers. When, when is that? You mean like with staff changing and all of that? Well, and I feel like there's, isn't there like one more fund that we're, for revenue that we're waiting to like... Are you talking this year's budget or next year? This year. Like in June yeah. before yes. July? Yes. Is there anything else or, that we're kind of expecting? Not for like this Medicaid? current budget. Okay. Um, but generally okay. we talk about fund balance. Fund balance. I think we're yeah, I mean there. anything yeah. that's left. Yeah. So okay. I won't close the books until probably August right. okay. um, because we get invoices over the summer yeah. for a June item. So then I usually report to the board in like August, like where we finally ended with the money okay. at the end of the year. Okay. And then that will is transferred to the yes. next year. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like. Five seventy five, five hundred and seventy five thousand two hundred and sixty nine, um, like available balance, and then in on under the un, in an unanticipated fund seventy five thousand five hundred fifty nine. That's the revenue, but you also haven't collected all your revenue, so that could be covering some of the ones that we may not receive all our revenue for. Oh, if we don't receive. Okay. So if you look like Medicaid right now, I still am looking for 8,700. If we don't get that, okay. that 75,000 will cover the shortfall in those other areas. Okay. okay. But as of now, we have 600, 575, 650,000 kind of. I mean, you should only really. Yeah, we can't spend the revenue. No. Nope. So. Well, I'm not asking yeah. to spend it. No, I know, <laughs> but I'm just saying you can't. I would just count on the fi the expenditure side oh, because so the 75, 75. Like I said, if we don't get these other areas, that that 75,000 is going to cover the revenue shortfall in the okay. other areas. But it so. looks very stable. Yeah. And 570, you know, that's, you yeah. know, with, with a, again, an early release this year, June um, 11th, you know, is 
our last day of school, um, which is earlier than many other days. So I feel confident, you know, I, all the work that you're doing and the staff are doing and everyone in the buildings of like just fiscal responsibility. This looks, um, we've kind of gone through, you know, we've navigated through it. I mean, you've yeah. navigated. I mean, the majority of that is that it. placement that we were encumbering, for like $300,000 from the beginning of the okay. year that did not come to fruition because the student didn't get placed. So okay. that's the majority of it. Okay. Um, so my question, and this may be redundant. I mean, I'm kind of jumping ahead. Sorry about that. But like, could that pretend in theory that we have 575, then can we use that towards the amount that the we did not get approved for no. from the no. city council? Nope, you have to use it within this current fiscal year. It can't be for expenditures for mm. next year. Mm. Yeah, that will be going 575, 75, or I, I would think, you know, and then with the buyback for the um, retirees. But it is, you know, again, due to everyone's hard work and, you know, being able to not just balance the budget, but kind of like be conservative and look towards things it looks like 575 and some you know 600 I'm not sure I'm just minusing the eight mm -hmm. there's a healthy amount to be able to be able to encumber the things that we early in the year because where we're ending up now so yeah nothing so can it be, won't go back to the city it will yes it yeah, will it all will yeah and then can we once we give it back to the city can we ask for it back to the 24 25 other discussion budget? at the end of the year when we see okay. how things kind of right. shake up. I, I, I'm yep. sorry, I'm I've been on budget and like I'm trying to get my head around all of it, but it's never happens. That's probably so. a late May, <laughs> June. You. We'll just yeah. see. Okay, we, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Thank I you. I think what Katie's giving you right now is her best crystal ball prediction. Yeah. I call it the of crystal course. ball. She's kind of making yeah. these predictions, and I, and I agree. You, you want to focus on the 575. 575. Okay. Okay. So 575. All right. All right. Thank you. All set. All right. No city council update this evening. Uh, committee reports. We'll start with standing committees, budget and revenue committee. Uh, board member Marsh. Thank you. First, I want to say I think those are all good, great questions, uh, board member Wentworth. And I think that um, no doubt that there are residents that have similar questions. And um, so I appreciate that. So the budget and revenue committee met on April 18th. Um, we had a budget process update at the time it was with the city council. Uh, now um, it has a budget has been approved, which will be discussed later on in the agenda. Um, we also had, we were provided a presentation regarding the community eligibility provision program, which is a meal service option for schools in school districts in low income areas to serve breakfast and lunch at no cost to all enrolled students and without applications to determine eligibility for school programs. Uh, we discussed pros and cons. It was a review of the program, um, including budgetary costs, because there are no, although there are no costs to the students, there are to the school district. Um, after discussion, the committee concluded the program is not represented in this current budget, um, and that we would have a, a further discussion sometime in August. Uh, we also discussed, discussed HB 1583, which is House Bill 1583. There's the status, which is relative to the um, per, per pupil cost of an opportunity for an adequate education. That's a quote, qu close quote. Uh, we reviewed that as a committee. Um, we discussed how on 411, HB 1583 was voted ought to pass. Um, by the New Hampshire House of Representatives. At the time uh, it, of the committee, it was being considered by the New Hampshire Senate in the Finance Committee, where it, it is still at. And they did have a hearing, this is an update, they did have a hearing today regarding it, a public hearing, um, and it will be voted on at some point in the future. It, but at this point, we don't know. Uh, it's not unusual for vote for it to be scheduled a week in advance or so. There's not a lot of time typically and um, a, lot, a lot of notice. Um, but we did discuss that and it was, and our um, business administrator uh, indicated that, it, uh, reported that the pass, if passed, it would be a significant financial benefit to the school district and certainly including our children. Um, and our next scheduled, um, Budget meeting is scheduled for May 16th. 
Thank, Thank you. you. I'm not sure. I think it's over a million dollars if that for a summer's worth. They have like map interactive maps, so it's over. I think it's um, right. a couple hundred thousand over one million if passed. So that is a. Not a great great timing for everything, but thank you for the update. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Building grounds and transportation committee. Um, board member clerk. So we have not met since our last meeting, um, but we are trying to finalize some time. We want to focus on buildings, um, the fields currently. We have not viewed those since the winter. I want to see what they're like. I also want to take a minute because um, I know it was mentioned on the city council level about our one of our roofs um, in the library and how um, it was still leaking. So the roof, um, as far as we know, is not leaking. Um, the problem is not to that. It's the, um, it's the weep holes in that brick wall. So I just want to make sure people understood that it wasn't actually the roof. We did replace that. It is the weep holes. And then I believe that we're looking at some masons coming in to look at that so we can repair it. And that is it. And okay. And do you is it your May 1st meeting? Um, so our next meeting, like I just said before, is not on for May 1st, correct. Okay, so we decided um, it was just too soon with a lot no. going on, but we're looking at our calendars to look at the fields. Yep. Okay, so like to be re to be rescheduled. Correct. Okay, got it. Yep. All right, thank you. Um, Educational Programs and Community Outreach Committee, uh, Board Member Wentworth. Thank you. Um, we have not met and we actually will not be meeting um, for the remainder of the school year. Um, we're getting some new, uh, a new assistant superintendent um, who is going to be in charge of curriculum and um, and then there are some changes. So it, it's just much better for us to just wait and start fresh in August or September. Um, so the May 7th date that is listed below um, is not, uh, is stricken from there. Thank you. All right. Policy just met. Board member Tierney. All right. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Policy did just meet. Um, and let's see. We talked. We actually had a very productive, even um, under an hour, we talked about three different policies. Um, quickly, um, Chair Larson had asked us to look at the policies IJOC and IJOCR, which uh, relate to volunteers. Um, they uh, were just sort of seeing, like, if, if that's currently used in the district and doesn't seem like it's necessarily being actively used, although it is there. So it is a current policy of ours. Um, but we might look, we're going to get confirmation on just how often it's used, but, it, you know, and if the, the front office uses it. Um, also probably going to um, add something about personal data there. So any volunteers working with students know that, you know, they have to follow whatever um, the district policies are regarding um, keeping things private that are meant to be private. Um, so we also finished up the discussion and we'll be ready for the first reading in the May, at our May 14th school board meeting for policy GBCD, which is background inv investigation and criminal history records check. Um, this was a policy that we basically, the NHSBA put out a sample policy. It is required by law. Um, we do have a current policy, but we are going to look to um, recommend that we withdraw our current policy and replace it with the um, NHSBA's policy, which just is, you know, more robust and has all the current legislation, you know, everything updated with the current legislation. Um, we, let's see, um, I guess the big thing out of there is that we just had a lot of discussion and the superintendent Gozinski really just clarified a lot of from his role, you know, what a superintendent will do and background when people are applying and volunteering and, um, you know, the background checks, criminal history checks and all that stuff that happens um, and all the decisions that are made on that end. Um, we, let's see, da, 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 um, clarified that the SAU pays for all background checks. So whether you're a volunteer, whether you're looking for employment, um, let's see, the last thing we looked at was policy FA, just very quickly. Um, this was facilities development goals and preparation of capital. It's a recommended policy by the NHSBA and just to kind of, again, up, updated with uh, current legislation, um, but we reviewed it and we didn't really feel like any changes were needed. So you won't really even see that because it's fine. It's fine the way it is. So um, we are done for the summer as well, the policy. So, you know, 
See you whenever. <laughs> last one. All right. So May May 14th, we'll strike off as well. So May 14th is not needed, and that's our last policy to get a first read at our next meeting on May 14th. Thank you so much. Perfect. All right. We have a presentation this evening. Yes, I'd like to. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome tonight um, Ms. Stacy Nivelle, and she's the Vice President of Operations, and Ms. Mara Martin, Executive Director of School Age Care. And they both work for the Granite YMCA, and they're here to talk about. Whoa! Sorry, sorry. They're here to talk sorry. about before and after school program, programming in general terms, in terms of what they do um, in districts throughout the state of New Hampshire. So, welcome. We're anxiously awaiting your presentation and look forward to it. And I'm going to get out of your way. And um, welcome. Oh, Lou, your head looks really good in that <laughs> No, it's okay. I, 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 um, it was okay. perfect. That worked exactly like they said it was going to. So, um, first of all, thank you very much for um, having us here. Uh, we, as Liz said, I was going to introduce us. He did a great job introducing us. So, thank you. Um, we are with the Granite Y. Um, our branch here, which I'll talk a little about later, um, our branch, uh, our newest branch of the Granite Y is right in Summersworth on um, Bartlett Ave, um, the former Summersworth Early Learning Center, um, just about a mile from here. So if you haven't been, feel free to swing by. Um, so we're just gonna present kind of some of the things that the Granite Y does um, as a whole and what we're doing in Summersworth and what we're hoping to do in the future. Um, if anybody has any questions along the way, you're welcome to pop in at any time or you can ask them at the end as well. Um, so this is just a, a little overview of the Granite Y. On the right-hand side, you'll see, so we have nine um, facility locations, uh, nine day camps, and we have 24 child care sites um, right now. So those are located both at branches and at schools. Um, and just some of the things that we do at the Y, we're focused on youth development, healthy living, social responsibility, and family strengthening. So those are kind of our four core areas, and then a lot of the stuff that we do um, falls under those. And most of what we're going to talk about is related to child care and youth development, but I just wanted to mention some of the other things that the Y does do because we are hoping to bring some of these things to our location in Summersworth and to other locations in Summersworth. So we have a lot of health intervention programs. Um, we are also a covered Medicare provider for a lot of these programs that we have. So, you know, Live Strong is a cancer survivor program, diabetes prevention, blood pressure monitoring. So just uh, these are some of the things that, although we've only been in Summersworth for about nine months now, um, we're hoping to be able to um, bring some of these as part of our everyday program and do more than just youth development. Okay, I'm sorry. I got lost. Um, the Granite YMCA is committed to making sure that the Y services and programs are available to all. We do have a fundraising effort, and we've raised $750,000 for our annual campaign, which goes towards scholarships. However, we give out $1.5 million in financial aid, so we actually do not fundraise the cost of aid we give out. Um, as you can see, over 10,000 members have uh, benefited from this, 406 programs. In childcare, 233 families. In camping, 396. And our Why Youth Matter programs, there are over 445 families that have benefited from this. Um, in our childcare programs, we have over 4,000 children that attend our day camps and our overnight camps. Our two overnight camps, Camp Foss, and Camp Mytina have uh, one's boys, one's girls, and our day camps are located throughout the state. Um, we have over 1,600 children in our early learning and school age child care program, otherwise known as Schools Out programs. We specifically serve over 1,400 children daily with our Schools Out program. We have over 13,000 members and again, we are part of a healthy eating program through the state of New Hampshire. We provide over 175,000 meals and snacks to participants in our programs. And this is specifically a program we have at our Summersworth branch. Every child in the program receives breakfast, lunch, and snack while they are there at no additional cost to the families. 
this is our lovely Summersworth location right now. Um, so in 2022, we started a um, consulting agreement with the then Summersworth Early Learning Center. And then this past June um, of 2023, we officially merged and they became our um, newest branch, which is the Y of Summersworth. Um, just some things that we are already connected in because our other closest branch is right in Rochester. Um, so some of the things we've already kind of doing in this region already. Um, we have a representative that sits on the Summersworth Ready Together Coalition. We have a representative that sits on the Regional Early Learning Collaborative that's here in this area. We have a staff who sits on the Dover Mental Health um, Alliance Board, which also supports the Summersworth area. Um, we, one of our uh, trainers has done youth mental health first aid training with some of the schools here in Summersworth. And we sit on the Stratford County Public Health Network Advisory Council as well, which again also supports the Summersworth area. Um, some things we're looking to do in the future, like I mentioned earlier, some of the healthy living programs we're hoping to bring to some of the community areas. Um, we're in the process, um, finally, of getting the funds to do a very large renovation of our space, um, which you'll see hopefully a beautiful new parking lot and playgrounds, and then we're renovating the inside um, as it was in desperate need of it to hopefully open up the rest of the classrooms that are there because we're uh, about three-fourths of the way full right now with the space that we have. Um, and some other things that we're hoping to do is helping to help support support the ACERT program that's um, here in Summersworth, as well as hoping to work with the housing authority since they're um, very closely our neighbor. Can you explain what ACERT is? Yes. Afternoon? Yep, sorry. Uh, so Adverse Childhood Experiences Response Team. Um, so we're actually involved in that in some of our other local communities. So, um, and we have uh, a mental health um, worker that's on our team that does a lot of our work for us. So as as a community organization, something like that, the part that we usually fill in for is if someone is in need of emergency child care or an emergency placement or something like that, we're a part of that team to hopefully give them the resources or connect them with other resources. So on the screen, you'll see where we are located before and after school sites. Not all of those sites have before school. But you'll see that we're in Goffstown, Concord, Boscoin, and Loudoun, Merrimack Valley, otherwise known as Dover, Wyndham, Londonderry, Manchester, and we do service Kittery, Maine at their primary school. So we are licensed in both Maine and New Hampshire. We also run programs at our branches. At the branches, those are generally sites where we bring have buses. Sorry. We have buses who bring uh, the students from the community schools to the branches to engage in our program there. So a typical day in after school, we have five core parts of our program, which actually makes us different than most after school programs. We specifically have time dedicated to outdoors unless, of course, it's raining or snowing. Um, we always provide a snack, which is in alliance with the New Hampshire State Guidelines for food programs. We always have a STEAM activity, uh, either science, technology, engineering, arts, or mathematics, as well as homework help. A huge part of our program is both leadership development when we integrate our YMCA core values we also are very dedicated to character development and social emotional awareness. As Stacy mentioned, we have a full time member of our child care team who is the director of social and emotional well being. She works very closely with us to come into programs, uh, observe, give us strategies, work with our staff to help them address some of the situations that do occur. And we always have a movement part. Um, and it depends on who's staffing, what kind of movement they do, because we allow our site directors to choose what they want to lead the group in and what their passion is. And that is our schedule for the day. Um, so just a little bit on all of our child care programs are licensed um, through the state of New Hampshire. Many of our programs are also licensed plus, which is just an added um, certification that you can get through the state. Um, and we are also um, licensed in Maine as well, like uh, Mara had mentioned, that we do run a program over, 
over the line. So we dual um, those together. Um, and so in addition to following all of the guidelines that the state requires with ratios and all of that stuff, their background checks, their fingerprints, anyone who works at the Granite Y is background checked um, and an additional background check to the ones that are required when they do the fingerprinting process as well. Um, just a few other things that we do uh, offer is um, vacation programming. So at at the Summersworth Early Learning, um, at our YS Summersworth right now, we have our Early Learning Center. So we have kids um, from six weeks all the way up to five. And we do run before and after school program there as well. So we have about 15 kids right now who get um, transported from the two schools here um, to that site for before and after school. And they also are able to come during you know snow days, school vacations, no school days, all of that stuff. Uh, we are planning to keep that. Uh, our vacation programs where we don't close a lot for snow either. We're pretty much here if we can get in the driveway. So um, just to give people an option to have somewhere to take their kids so that they can work. So that is something we're continuing. And our hope is that we're going to be able to ex uh, expand our before and after school programs. So our greatest partner are the families that we serve. And we consider communication to be key to that relationship. We make sure that our families are receiving a monthly newsletter via email and hard copy. And we also have at every site something called a parent board, which will have any and all information about upcoming events, flyers, registration forms, all that jazz. We also make sure that we're in contact with families who are having some challenges. And one of the things that we are very blessed to have is Katie Soul, our Director of Social and Emotional Wellbeing, who has really stepped into the role of helping our families negotiate when they're going through challenging times and when they need additional support. As Stacy mentioned, all of our staff are fingerprinted, background checked, and one thing that I do want to highlight is the YMCA actually is committed to a higher standard when it comes to ratio of staff to children than is uh, mandated by the state. The YMCA follows the 1 to 12 rule, while the New Hampshire state is 1 to 15. Uh, so we already mentioned our financial assistance through the Y. Obviously, we offer financial assistance um, to all of the families. We are also, because we are licensed, we accept the state of New Hampshire reimbursement. Um, our, we have registrars at every location that will actually help families try to navigate the system um, to register for that, because if you've ever looked at it, it's not the easiest thing to figure out. Um, they did just pass a huge bill this past year that upped the uh, requirement for the scholarship by a lot, so a lot more families qualify now. We actually just put some marketing stuff together for um, our people just to let them know because nobody really knows that, and a lot more people might qualify now for that scholarship um, than would have before. So we're trying to continue getting the word out there. It just became active in January um, after it passed last year. So. Um, other thing, we do have a summer camp. Um, we run it in Rochester, and we do bus um, right from Idlehurst for the Summersworth community to be able to attend that. And we do accept the rekindling curiosity um, for summer camps and, again, help people navigate that, figure it out, and um, all of that stuff that goes with it. So we want to make sure that our staff are ready to really manage the kids when they get in, provide them with a safe and fun environment. We have a very high list of trainings that we require our staff to go through prior to their going into program with children. You'll see a lot of them on that list. Some of them you may understand, some maybe not, it's okay. But we are really committed to making sure that we have child abuse, abuse prevention trainings for our staff. All staff receive CPR and first aid certification. We are committed to diversity and inclusion. And again, we focus a lot on behavior management because we find that the kids don't leave their problems at school. They bring them in the door with them. So we need to be prepared to help them and support them. Um, but we are, I'm sorry, not we are. We meet um, all licensing, uh, standards for the state of New Hampshire, and then some. 
And just in our end, just so people have a better idea of what our organization structure looks like, um, obviously, as you said, myself and Mara um, and Katie, who we talked about already. Um, and then in each of our regions, we have two regions right now, which we consider our southern region and our eastern central. Um, Ellie Griffiths, who is here with us as well, um, that's her region here. Um, so she supports the Summersworth community, Rochester, um, and the Portsmouth community and all the programs that we run out there. And then underneath each of our regional directors, we have program directors. Then we have the site directors. The site directors are the ones that are there at the program every day running the show. Um, most of our site directors are all full time, um, as depending on what their program hours are and things like that. And then we have group leaders and assistant group leaders under them that are our high school and our college kids. So just to get an idea of what you know we have as a whole, um, some other things that we do have that are not up here because they're more of on our association level is we have a director of training and leadership development who helps work with all of our professional development on all levels of our staff. Um, and we also have a licensing coordinator who will help with a lot of our licensing um, you know, questions, things she does, random checks and all of that stuff. Um, so just a couple extra parts that we have as part of our larger organization. And thank you all. If there are any questions, we're happy to, to answer them and we appreciate the time. And So um, thank you for coming. My, yeah, it's on. Um, so way back in the day, I started at the YMCA teaching um, group exercise. So this is, I'm so happy coming forward. Um, can you talk a little bit about how, what the membership price is for your before and after school care? I know that you have a sliding scale, but what that would look like for families. Yeah, so for next year, um, our, we have two prices. We have a three-day or two- to three-day price and a four- to five-day price. So our weekly price for full-time is $97 um, a week, and our part-time is $73. But again, we offer financial assistance for anyone. So although it's on a direct sliding scale, people apply, and we do have a scale that you get a percentage off, as well as said, if you have a family of um, four now and make under $100,000, you are qualify for money from the state to support your child care as well. Okay. Because I don't know what it is right now. I know SYC is pretty much coming to an end, right? But yes. Um, Katie. The full time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. yep. just because $400 a month for our families could be tricky. For sure. I don't know if anyone else feels the same, but but I don't know what they were paying with SYC um, for full time. Yep. So um, for full time. Before and after? That's yeah. just after. Our before right. school is uh, about $60 for a full week for before. I just want to make sure we're doing our due diligence for. Yeah. Look awesome. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. And that's all and that's all other things that we we want to make it affordable for families too so we will find a way to make things work out our prices are association wide for all of our programs for consistency but again in certain areas there are we do different things if we need to so right now um if you were to do a, it's it's different like levels but um just elementary after school is uh, 250 a month. Um, then there's a free and reduced rate. And then at the middle school, it's $80 a month. Um, for before care um, at Idlehurst, it's 150 a month. Um, before care at Maplewood is $100 a month. Combined Maplewood um, for before and after, if you did both programs, it would be 320 a month. And uh, combined Idlehurst, it's 360 a month. Uh, one of, one of the things I wanted to point out, you're open longer, correct? I don't think we're as, we're open as long as till five thirty. Yeah, it's all of our programs are open till six. So that's that's another thing to consider is mm -hmm. the longer. The half an hour yeah, hour. yeah. Um, all right, um, board member Wentworth, followed by Tierney. Um, so my question is, uh, first of all, yay, thank you so much. Um, and it's clear that you guys, um, are very passionate, uh, about really providing, um, for our students, um, which we are as well. That's why we're all sitting here. So that's awesome that we're all on the same page. Um, and my, my question is what would be kind of the thinking behind 
doing it at the um, at your location versus going to a school? Like, how does that kind of like shake out? Because I know that right now we all of the programs are at our schools, and so I, I'm not sure if that's something that you kind of. Yeah, so in in a lot of our places, it works out best for everyone to have it at the school because the kids are already there. You don't have to worry about the transportation. It's no added stress of any of that stuff, as well as it's more convenient for the parents. Um, we are very close to the schools here, but in some places we're not, so having it there um, is always a lot easier. Um, and also where our location is, we are limited in space. So we have one classroom that is dedicated to school age, so we would have to cap it once we get to the maximum of that classroom. Whereas in a school, typically, if they have a gym space or a cafeteria or something, or even classrooms that are open, we're able to expand. Our largest after-school program right now has 150 kids at it. And as long as the school gave us space, we will keep taking and meeting the need. Okay, and what is your current before uh, school? Like, what are the hours? I have no idea. Uh, so it really depends on what time the school opens. Most of our programs run 7 to the start of the school day, which in most of our communities are around 8.30. So okay. right now that's what we're running. Our building opens at 7, and then the kids get walked over to school and take the bus. Okay. And that's um, and so the before school, they would get breakfast. Yep. Um, and then after care, they would get a snack. Yep. Super snack is what we call it. A super <laughs> You get a super snack. This has more than um, one component of a okay. snack. <laughs> and then just out of, I have no idea, you guys. So, um, Katie, maybe you can answer this. Do the, does SYC provide a snack? I believe they actually get dinner um, provided by CAP. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah. Tierney followed by Marsh, yes. Um, Thank you uh, for coming, for, first of all. Um, so I, it sounds like you're alluding to it, so I just want to ask for clarification. Um, are you talking about EFAs? Are, are you going to talk about the eligibility for family of four or $100,000? Is that educational freedom accounts, or, or is that not? No, that's the child care scholarship through okay. the child care development block grant in the state. Oh, okay, child care scholarship. Okay, I didn't think so, but I just that was the only thing I was... And there of. are, since you mentioned that, there are a lot of places that also help fund. So, like, there, there's military. We work with a lot of organizations, depending on, and you know, parents' uh, flex spendings and all of those things. Yeah. So our registrars will work with any type of other fundings that they have as well. So, and then do your registrars, um, are they able to provide different... Um, you know, share with the parents, oh, here's different options you might be able to consider because the parents might not be aware. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And okay. that's really their biggest thing. And that's why they, they help work through the, the scholarship okay. process and things like that. And when it comes to summer camp, there's different options than there are during the school year. So we do that right now just with the families that we have. Right. Um, and obviously getting to know this community more, we would continue looking at other options that are here too. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and then my other question was, so what would you envision um, in regards to transportation? Would you envision um, being able to bus to from the from the different schools to the center, or it would really depend? It would like, be at the schools. It would be in our schools. It would be the YMCA. Oh, it would just take the place of. Can I take the place of SYC? Oh, I thought you were asking because it I, wasn't. Oh, okay. I, I had asked to like give a thing, and they they said that if if it could be done. Okay. Right now, they're already three fourths full. Well, that was going to be my other question: was how <laughs> cap? Like, what's this cap we're talking about? Because it okay. Yeah, it would all be in. It would be in the schools, most likely Idlehurst. Like, just just but as just, it is, just like it SYC would be is now. a YMCA. You know, after school, like in Dover and Man 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 Manchester, all those other. It would be in their schools. I mean, our schools are kind of seen as in in a structure as like community center. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. As and and just to have that space and be you know we have the space for it and everything like that. So, so just, and what grades would this encompass? Kindergarten through five. K through five. Okay. We serve elementary schools. However, if your elementary school goes to sixth grade, you serve to sixth grade. Got it. Okay. So then this option doesn't help our middle school kiddos. We have a separate program. Oh, you have so a separate. Oh, okay. Sorry. I can't remember the exact uh, 
division of the two schools, but it would be covering those two schools. Oh, like oh, you do sorry. now, okay. hopefully right. one busing to the other. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Currently, if Maplewood students want to attend Idlehurst um, aftercare, they bus they from bus. Maplewood over to Idlehurst. Okay. So. And we do that at other places too, and we do break them up by age so that we're running kind of separate programs yep. in the same space so the older kids get to do different activities than the younger kids. Okay. So, you, so in other words, then, so our K through eight students are able to be served yes. through this. Pro- Got it. Thank you. All right. Okay. Or um, board member Marsh and followed by decent green. Then. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so th- thank you for being here. Uh, you know, thank you for your passion and uh, commitment. Uh, it comes through in your words and your tone. Um, so thanks for being here. Um, and I and I, I recognize that you know we're here tonight and we're and we're talking about before school and after school care because of our children. But I will say. It was noteworthy to me that one of the statements that you made was you, were, you also spoke of the parents, and you spoke of the parents, and you said, so they can work, right? And I think that's important, um, and in part because, you know, we, school board members don't often talk about taxes and so forth. I recognize that, but, you know, every year we ask our our parents, many of them, to pay more taxes to, to fund the schools, which is, you know, certainly something that we, I believe, we should be doing. However, um, it also goes back, I think, to their, their, um, uh, their need to work <laughs> to afford those taxes. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up. So thank you for mentioning that. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and right. Not just about taxes, but also about food, mm-hmm. utilities, paying the mortgage and the rent and so forth. So, um, so it was it actually we just mentioned regarding middle school. Um, what do you participation in middle school students? Um, you know, how much? What do you see as far as participation as opposed to? Um, elementary students, and any difference in the in the programming, generally? Yeah, and what we really try to do when we come into a place is entice the kids along the way. So by the time they get to the middle school, they've been having so much fun that they stay with us anyways. Um, we've seen really success with that in some of the you know middle school programs that we do run. But we do try to structure the middle school program as ways of um, that the kids will get to do kind of what they want to do. So we have a couple middle school programs right now that the kids actually make their kind of yearly agendas and they get to learn things that they didn't think, you know, so they get to do cooking and kind of learn some of the basic life skills um, and also see what careers they might want to, you know, learn more about. So we found that trying to find the interest. And again, that will depend on each group of kids. But if they're interested in it and they're liking going and with a group of people that they like being with, then they're going to ask their parents to continue coming. And I just want to clarify, would that be at the middle? I, I know it's within the schools, but for, for the middle school students, would it be within the middle school or would they potentially, I know this is early on and we're just discussing, um, but do you foresee them being transported to one of the elementary schools? So to start, they would probably be transported to the elementary schools. If we got enough interest in both of the programs, we could run at both of the separate locations. Like I said, across our association, we do a little of both. Um, If the programs aren't big enough, typically you need a program about 25 kids in order to be enough to pay enough staff to be there. Um, But if so, if we had that at one of the other programs, we could run something at each of the locations. Thank you. And lastly, um, so we we were talking about the the, the SYC rates, and I mean, clearly they were lower than, than, than they will be for uh, probably any others mm-hmm. because it was subsidized, because it was subsidized. Um, so my question to you is, have you had any school districts um, subsidize or provide, um, well, subsidize, you know, at any, at any rate um, to minimize or to lower the overall cost beyond um, fin- the financial aid that's available? 
Yep, that's a great question. We actually have. Um, we have uh, two right now that still do. Um, and again, it's year to year if it's going to be cut. That's the hard part for families. Um, and some of them were not charging their families a lot at all. And then they've kind of moved up every year to kind of like ease the burden. Um, so right now our Farmington School District still um, subsidizes for the programs that we run there. They subsidize a small amount and the families pay. It's about 50-50, I believe. Um, and one of our other ones pays, you know, about 40, 40, 60 with the parents paying 60 um, percent. So I will say across the board, any little bit obviously would help the families and subsidizing obviously does help them tremendously. And those that would qualify for those other services that I talked about, even if somebody would subsidize parts of it, they could still qualify for those services and almost kind of double dip in both of those. All right. Thank you. Um, it's uh, D. St. Croix, please. Hi, and then thank Clark you, and then Wentworth. Thank you. Um, I had a quick question. What is your staffing versus student ratio? So for how many students, how much staff? 12 to 1. 12 to 1. Thank you. Sorry. State of New Hampshire is 15 to 1. And that's the staff, if every kid were to show up, that is registered that day. So it ends up being a lot lower. Um, and for sites over a certain amount of kids, our site director is not counted in that ratio. They're an extra person so that they can help, you know, do check-in, check-out, and all that stuff, communicating with the families. I just want to say um, thank you to Board Member Marsh. Those were my questions I had about the middle school and the subsidization. Subsidization? Subsidization. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the word. Um, I may have made it up. That's fine. But thank you for that. That was, I thank you for clarifying that. We do have a small amount of students at the, I just asked, we have about 10. So at the middle school currently that, that go and it's, uh, it is, um, I think about $20 to, to go to that program. All right. Board member Wentworth. Uh, also shout out to board member, uh, Marsh with his subsidized question um, and then the, the other thing that I just wanted to circle back to really quickly is that um, you know in summers where I think our families are like crazy important to us and we ask so many questions but also I, I felt like it was noteworthy to point out that what is being offered is a drop in the bucket compared to what we had before. So while it's still um, incredibly affordable, it is like there's so many more, there's so much more training and just opportunities and it's just staggering and overwhelming all the things that we can offer and would be able to do now. Um, and so I think that that is absolutely noteworthy uh, as to the um the difference as well so great all right Thank you. um yep tierney anyone else no we're good um just kind of popped in my head how do you handle students who have um special needs and i realize that's a huge broad spectrum mm -hmm. but just in general like how how do you approach that? Yeah, so we don't have the ability to provide a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. um, we have had some parents go through the process and get their own one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but what we do try to do is we give everybody a chance. We try to accommodate um, where we can. We will have extra staff members who can um, be more ha more hands-on with those individual students. Like we talked about before, we do have our um, social emotional well-being director. So when we are having issues, she will come in and do observations for us and give suggestions um, based off of all of her training and all of that in ways that we might be able to make um, kids successful. Mm -hmm. We have been very successful, and in some cases, we have not been 100% successful with every kid. Yep. Um, but we are willing to try and willing to do whatever we can to really work with the parents um, to try to make it work for everyone. So do you have anybody on staff or is it, as part of the training, any a special, a special ed specific, like teachers who are trained with, have special ed backgrounds? Our social emotional director, um, she trains in adverse childhood experience, positive childhood experience, mental health first aid, um, behavior management. So she does a lot of that stuff for yep. all of our staff. Um, they get it multiple times during the year. Right. Um, we've also brought in more specific, if we've needed to, and at different times of year, um, specifics to um, certain special needs. So we've done, um, you know, ADHD trainings and um, autism trainings and a lot of specialized things if we're seeing that there's a need for more training in those areas. Okay. All right. Thank you. I think we're 
Nearly there. Thank you so much. I think there's one thing that I'm thinking about, and just to put it out there, your establishment on Bartlett Ave and your growth, you know, thank you so much for investing in Summersworth. I'm thinking of the Flanagan Center. That's very close to you. Do you, that building that's part of the housing, um, Summersworth housing. Right across the street. Yeah. Oh. I also had the same thought. <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. I'm kind of thinking, you know, if you're growing and how the Flanagan Center, it, we don't have a community center here in um, Summersworth for youth, and it's always kind of been a discussion. So I'm just, there's a there's the center there. It's kind of um, owned right by the Summersworth Housing Authority. And wouldn't it be great to kind of expand into other programming for youth? I'm just kind of, I'm manifesting at a public meeting. Yeah. Uh, you know, when nothing is off the, the table, YMCA. you say Sorry. it, it becomes yeah. a thing. So, no, but, I mean, yeah. like I said, this was our first year. Our focus is really to solidify what they have there, make it viable for the future, and to continue renovating that, getting it filled with families, meeting the need of all that, and then you know, the sky's the limit at that point with everything else. So, Thank you so much, and thank you for coming to Summersworth. We, we thank appreciate you guys. it. Thank you. All right. Moving right along. We have no policies this evening. So we'll move to new business and uh, agenda one eight point one federal general assurances fiscal year twenty five. Right, I can I can speak to that. Yes, please. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So, in in, in your packet, I presented you with some information from the New Hampshire Department of Education. It was a memo that was sent out to superintendents and just reminding us that we need to bring, have note that we've discussed assurances publicly. So in order to uh, receive grants, the superintendent uh, has to assure along with the school board chair that we're meeting certain requirements. Mm. And you, you can go through the whole pack and see those. Um, and it's required that I talk about it with you in public uh, before Maggie and I sign it, right? And so it's, it's, it's meant to um, make sure that we, we assure the state that we're in compliance with a variety of different things and so that we can get our grant money. So that's, mm. it's kind of a um, pro forma type of, um, uh, of uh, item. But I don't know if you had any questions specifically about the packet, but it's really an annual event that we look and inform the board. It has to be captured in the minutes, Katie, that we discuss yes. the <laughs> federal assurances for fiscal year and 25. Oh, and yes. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Katie. Do you want to say something? We, well, we actually just got an email today because each yeah. year we also do a single audit for our grants if we receive over a certain threshold. And we received an email from today actually from the DOE that they received our single audit and there were no um no problem no so, so oh yes um, um, my question fresh off of our policy meeting and I'm looking at your federal uh, form that you have to fig uh, fill out on page 6 of 17 it's listing the policy that the subrecipient must have written policies and procedures for and it's got a whole list of stuff right and I assume you're going to fill out, or, or when you're saying that it's a pro, this is yeah, a pro forma, you, we do have policies for all of these. Did yeah, you? we okay. check off those. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and part of the single audit, when they come and audit us, they check to they make check sure we policies. have all of these. Plus, we have policy DAF, which is administering all of our federal grants, and most of these are covered under, under that one blanket policy. Right. Yeah, maybe you could just speak to the process. So is this a... Um, like, is this a, a sort of a self-audit where, like, we sort of fill out a form and then submit evidence and then somebody checks it or does somebody come and interview? Like, how does the, how do we demonstrate that we're in compliance? The audit, go ahead, Katie. You can talk well, about there's the two, yeah. each year, our, we have regular district auditors that come in and audit our regular books. 
as part of that, there's also a single audit. So if you receive over, I think it's 750000 or maybe it's more than that, in federal grants, you also have to have a single audit, which then they come in and they, they pick a specific grant and they drill down deeper into the, that specific grant and they check all of these things. They also have compliance visits where the DOE will come in and do a compliance visit where they will check all of these right. policies, make sure we have our procedures in place and do all of that as well. So there's a couple of different layers. You don't get chosen all the time. If you have clean single audits, like I just said we had, sometimes they won't pick you. They'll put you at like a lower risk, but they will visit you occasionally and make sure you have all of this. But these have to be signed each year, just saying that we will do all of the, these things. And we're, good, we're in good shape for the shape we're in. Wonderful. Yeah. Anything else needed, required so I just, to No, speak? I just wanted to bring it up. Uh, Maggie and I will then sign it. Katie has minutes of uh, the meeting and we'll assure that we talked about it and we have minutes in the meeting. All right. All right. General All right. assurances given. Yes. Just to clarify though, this has happened every, like we've had. Every year. Okay. Well, they come every year. They, you have, it's just a lot of information you may not have read through. And I understand wow. that. That's right. It's in your packet, right? Is it in their packet? Yeah, I put it in their packet. It's in your packet, so. <laughs> Some nighttime reading. I'm not sure if you got it in your packet before, but I always put it in the packet. <laughs> it's in the packet. So I could say I gave it to you, and then I'm covered. That it's in your packet. You read it. We talked about it, and we're we going to get our grant money. We appreciate it, but it's yeah. All right, moving on to 8.2, our proposed school board meeting dates for 24-25. Um, it was in your packet. Things can be adjusted. Um, we'd like to, you know, this is the time to kind of put it out there. Things can be adjusted. It looked, it looked. Um, fine to me, but again, let's uh, we'll we'll keep it on until for new business to, for the uh, next meeting for um, kind of a vote on it next, okay. for next meeting. Great. And then eight point three, just you know, apropos to our to our presentation, um, the before and after school program ad hoc group. Um, I'd like to kind of form a group to discuss, you know, what what it looks like in the future. We had a presentation this evening. We'll have another presentation in May from another like child care center, Rochester Child Care. Um, I've asked someone from city council. I've asked um, board member Marsh to be a part of it. We're asking kind of a um, building level person uh, and a couple of staff members um, that Superintendent Gosinski will ask for on, on the school and side. Have Katie participate. Yep. And then a, um, a parent participation, you know, for someone in um, that's currently, you know, has used uh, SYC. So if there's anything else, it's not a board committee with quorum. Um, it will, it's more of an ad hoc kind of exploratory so people's stakeholders can have a voice at the table. Yep. Of course. Just ask a quick question. I know when Lou and I met with both groups, they need to know sooner rather than later what your decision is going to be if you're going to go with them because they do need to get licensed for our program. So I don't know if this if you're planning on this committee making that decision or if this is just like an in general conversation for future. But it may need to be sped up because they do need to get licensing in place to be able to start in September is what I remember oh, right, them right. saying. Yeah, so they need, it's like a three-month process. So, and Katie and I have talked to both groups and about the process. So I'm hoping that you would see another presentation on the 14th of May and then make a decision on the 28th of May. So we can move this forward because then you'll have mm -hmm. June, July, and August to to get all that paperwork done. But if you go past May, you're really pushing no. the envelope. It would be starting next week, I think, and then just kind of having a couple of like voices at the table about what to, to hear. Um, it is ultimately in the board's um, hands for a decision, but it's good to kind of get input from stakeholders and kind of exploratory committee, and it would just be this month. So it would probably only be meeting two to three times max um, this month. And if anyone, you know, please reach out to me um, or any board representative and get back if you'd like to kind of like be a part of it. It's more of a stakeholder input group than a decision um, uh, body, which is ultimately in our hands, if that makes sense. Okay, yes. Yep. For advisory committees, do we need to have a board vote just formalizing them? I, I have a vague recollection of, of you know, these advisory ad hocs ad hoc, under, under yeah. a year that we just have to have a formal vote to just yeah, good go idea. forward with that. So yeah. I, yeah. does any, I can't remember if, it, if I'm thinking <laughs> right or not, but anyone? Well, no, I think it's, I think it's, okay, yeah. all right, thank yeah. you. That was my question.
Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And stakeholder input. Yeah. So it wouldn't be um, formalized like a quorum, I mean, quorum or anything like that. But I think that's a great suggestion, um, Board Member Brown. So do I have a, a motion to approve a before and after school program ad hoc group um, exploratory committee for this month? Um, I make a motion that the school board approve an ad hoc committee to review before and after school programs with a composition as described by Chair Larson. <laughs> Ooh, second. Okay. Perfect. Okay. All right. Any discussion on this item? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you for making this formal. I think that was a great idea. Appreciate it. Um, all right. All right. Moving to old unfinished business, our approved fiscal year 25 budget discussion. I'm going to kick this off. So I, I asked Katie to um, put together a memo, and she did today, um, talking about um, what's going to be funded, our recommendations and administrative team to fund. Clearly, um, uh, it's not as much as we asked for. Uh, the total amount is 650000 above the tax cap. Um, but we can fully fund Tier 3. And, and what's interesting, I met with the administrative team today, and we really did a lot of work on this budget, mm -hmm. a lot of agony and, you know, what, what are we going to recommend? And so getting to the decision today was pretty easy because we did all our work early on. And so we had a great meeting this morning. Um, uh, for Tier 2, we're recommending that we do fund the grounds maintenance position. Uh, everyone at that meeting, including uh, everyone, was in support of that. Um, there's concerns about, you know, our grounds, our fields, and so uh, educators as well as those that work in custodial and, you know, management services for facilities care, we're all in agreement. Uh, we also felt it was important to fund the Idlehurst Special Education Paraprofessional. And I want to talk in non-public a little bit about the part-time guidance position. Um, but what you see before you is what the whole team unanimously agreed to today. Uh, and I do appreciate their feedback. And um, it was a good meeting, I thought. So that's where we're at. Um, you know, I look at it, the glass is half full here. It's not half empty, right? We, we, we got, you know, above the tax cap, which is great. Um, we'll see what revenue comes in. Um, Katie doesn't have that magic ball because it's up to the legislature at this particular point. Uh, but uh, I'm hopeful that uh, we'll get some additional funding. And I'm also hopeful that perhaps we could use some of the reserve that, I'm, I'm sorry, unfunded. I'm sorry, I'm getting tired. The, the unspent money to apply to some things. Um, so I think in the end we're going to be okay. I really do. Um, it's a long process, and you know it just seems like yesterday we started this back in it was not back in October, and here we are. Uh, but do we need to do anything formalized with this? It looks like yeah. we may have to. What we have in front of us, the memo and the. Um, the tiers. I don't know if you want to do that after non-public, or we can do it now. I don't know if there's any. Basically, just need to approve the amount. Yeah, the amount. It's Bottom not line. so okay. much the tiers. It's more it just the, the, exact the total amount dollar that you have amount. Here. Okay, so there, it, I referenced so, it here yeah, in the memo it. for so you. So just a motion to formulate to approve the FY twenty four twenty five budget at that amount with that exact amount with yep. all the. Right. Yeah, I would like to formally approve the fiscal year twenty four twenty five budget in the amount of thirty one. Million nine hundred and sixty nine thousand seven hundred and forty seven dollars. Do I have a second? <laughs> um, second. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion? Yes, Board Member Marsh. Love to have lots of it. I just want to thank everyone involved um, with the budget process. Um, all the SAU team, all the the district team, the teachers, and building administrators, um, again, in the, certainly uh, the business administrator, superintendent, um, board members. And I want to thank the city council as well. You know, I've spoke before um, about how um, you know, they're charged with, with, um, uh, with prioritizing, yes, the, the ch our children, but they also have a, they have broader, um, 
pri priorities as well, not just our schools. And I appreciate the discussion they had, uh, including the dissenters, because not everyone in the community, you know, supports our budget necessarily. So it makes sense that not everyone on the city council does. Um, so I think it was a uh, generally a, a healthy discussion that they had. And um, and in and in the end, you know, um, I think I appreciate what um, you know, more is better. But at the same time, I, I I think this is a reasonable budget for us that they came up with for us. And um, so I just want to thank all involved. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Yeah, Board Member Clark. Yeah, along those same lines. Thank you, uh, Marsh. Same thing. Like I just think so many people that came together to make this work. This was scary in the beginning, right? We had all these cuts that were going to happen, and I was so worried about our students, but knowing that we're able to keep the CTE, CTC program, a math position, or a high school position, to have all those things that really matter for our students, like I'm so thankful for everyone coming together and the city council as well, stepping up and um, helping. This was amazing. So, Yes, I'm, I'm for it. Thank you. Yes, Board Member Brown. I was going to make my comments at the end, but everyone's you know, commenting on it now, so I'll, I'll do that the same. And, and again, um, heartfelt thanks to the City Council for all they did. Um, they heard us and greatly appreciate the extra funding. Thank you so very much. Um, and as Lou said, um, with everyone looking at and vetting all of these cuts and coming up with the tiers. I thank all of the mm. staff and administrators that helped in that process. I also um, shout out to Lou for his leadership in having this because I think this budget process, mm. this vetting that happened is smoother this year and I greatly appreciate that. Yes. So thank you to everybody um, and look forward to moving on with it with the budget and let's uh, hope that the state gives us more thank you thank you board member Tierney yeah I was just um, along those same lines I was just sitting here thinking this process felt a lot different this year and I appreciate it just yeah I mean as you know to, to Carrie's point I mean this it, we were at the beginning we were like oh my goodness this is you know but um, but yeah I it just feels different and I'm grateful. So. It's just gonna echo what everyone said, the grateful of everyone's work, kind of dedication, level-headedness, and the real focus on our district and um, maintaining programs, maintaining education, maintaining well-being, maintaining safety, all of these th all of these things, and our advocacy and, um, and just kind of the respect for our um, community and our district is, is seen. I appreciate that. We still have the motion on the table to approve this figure. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Um, okay, thank you. All right. Um, future meeting dates. Our next meeting is, uh, is May 14th at 7 p.m. And um, any moving to agenda item 11, any comments by visitors? All right, seeing none. Any comments by board members this evening? Uh, we are going into a non-public, but any comments by board members? We still have a couple more meetings on the books. All right, seeing none, we'll go right into it. Um, do I have a motion to go into non-public for 91A32A-C? I make a motion that the board go into a non-public session pursuant to the authority of RSA 91A, colon 3, Roman 2, AC. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you. Second? Second. Second. Do you say Croy? All right. Can I have a roll call, please? Maggie Larson? Yes. Todd Marsh? Yes. Carrie Clark? Yes. Sarah O'Brien Hart? Yes. Crystal D. St. Croix? Yes. Marsha Brown? Yes. Barbara Wentworth? Yes. Susan Tierney? Yes. Gemma Soldati? Yes. Thank you. Oh, we'll get the minutes.